introduction. I'm uh, today here as a Dean of the Faculty of Business and Health of the University of Health Sciences Bielefeld. This is in Germany and uh, I will tell you a few uh, words in a, uh, in a few minutes. But I'm not alone uh, here in uh, your wonderful university. Uh, I'm a little bit jealous. It's very nice here. And uh, this audio here, and it's, it's brilliant. Congratulations for this uh, uh, infrastructure we have. Thank you very much. I'm here with my president, uh, Professor Schramberg. And uh, thank you very much, Rebecca, for the invitation. I think we met in um, September here uh, at the seaside. I remember. And uh, it was uh, because um, um, I was invited by the GIZ. Uh, um, thank you very much. And uh, we traveled uh, one week around um, uh, from uh, uh, Tirana to Duras and El Basan and so on. Uh, and it was a great present for me to get in touch with all the wonderful people uh, I met. And I could see that uh, uh, we have um, a lot of very good institutions here in Albania, and we would like to introduce ourselves to create a long relationship with you. And then we thought about uh, the idea, uh, how can I introduce myself? And um, that is uh, that we have in Germany, but when we traveled, uh, Dr. Jasper, uh, when we traveled, uh, we had the same idea uh, that the discussion is uh, how uh, can you set up startups? How you can create um, entrepreneurs? Uh, and how can you create, let's say, wealth for a region and wealth for a nation, for example? And uh, this is an ongoing um, discussion also in, in my country. It's very, very uh, important, uh, this startup discussion. And the idea was uh, I introduced only my area and what we are doing to uh, yes, uh, give you a chance to create your own business so that you uh, can, um, uh, can uh, work in your country, that you can work in your region uh, with um, um, very good uh, perspective and what can we do as a university to make this happen. So that's the idea. And um, if you talk about uh, entrepreneurship, or about uh, uh, startups, then you have different uh, words today which are quite important. Perhaps you can uh, listen to these things which are not only how can I create a mid-sized company or my own business, and for example, you talk about entrepreneurial ecosystems. That's quite new also for me and quite strange. It's very difficult to pronounce for a German, yes. And uh, therefore, you say uh, startup region also, and startup region OBL, it, it's a long name. I come from Ostwestfalen Lippe. You can try to pronounce it. Ostwestfalen Lippe. Uh, typical German. Long word, you cannot uh, pronounce it. So, so Ostwestfalen Lippe. And where is Ostwestfalen Lippe? Can you compare this area with some area uh, here in Albania? I said it's a little bit like Korcha. Perhaps like Korcha, by Ola, can we say it's like, yes? Okay. So, uh, if we uh, see this area, uh, it should be uh, this uh, area. And here we have Germany, and then we have uh, my country, North Rhine-Westphalia. It's a little easier than Ostwestfalen-Lippe. North Rhine-Westphalia, and here in the eastern part of this country, of the west, western part of Germany, therefore east-west. This is uh, Ostwestfalen. And uh, it is that we are living a little bit uh, between forest and industry. So we are, uh, yes, landscape, we are uh, in an area which is not so heavily populated. For example, like Berlin. Berlin is here, and uh, here is Munich. And uh, what is uh, the specialty of this area? The specialty of this area is that young people like you, they of course want to go to Berlin and Munich. And uh, what happens then with the area? The area means, uh, okay, we need young people, we need uh, young people who create their own business, and we have to do something for these people, yes? 
So, and uh, on the one hand side, we are sitting a little bit between all these famous cities like Munich and uh, the Berlin. However, uh, you find very important companies in our area. And uh, very famous companies uh, in our uh, country, in Germany, but perhaps you have already heard something about uh, Dr. Oetker. Dr. Oetker is uh, in the uh, nutrition area, they make pizzas. Uh, for example, frozen pizzas, and they sell a bunch of them. They're very famous, and they make baking powder, and so on. And uh, you can find them here also in the shops. Dr. Oetker, worldwide, very important. Then you have Miele, for example. And Miele, do you know Miele? Yes. yes. Everybody knows Miele. They are faster than I am. And then uh, we have Bertelsmann. Bertelsmann is also a family-owned huge company, which is more in the media and music business, very huge. And uh, then we have some other companies, I know, but uh, not so famous because they are in the business-to-business -business sector. And you know that business-to-business -business is not as famous uh, as, for example, consumer product companies. Yes, they don't make so much uh, publicity and so on. However, these uh, Companies are all family owned. You can shake hands to the owner still, and they are huge, huge companies. So we are living in a very rich area. Family owned means, however, a little bit conservative. Yes, a little bit conservative. And now we have the problem that everything is changing. Because, for example, of the digital disruption, digital, digital transformation. All companies have to develop very fast uh, to be competitive and uh, that's not so easy for a family-owned company. Yes. This is our challenge. We have a lot of money in our area. We have very reliable companies, very healthy companies, but we feel we have to do more for the uh, development to be competitive in the future. Yes. Okay, then how can we do this? Um, and. Uh, I shouldn't forget this. I don't start to read newspaper now, sorry, but I have to show this to you. It was uh, last Sunday in uh, one of the most popular uh, newspapers in Germany, uh, which are uh, concentrated on uh, economic news, for example, yes. And what you can see, they could write it, innovation in Ostwestfalen Lippe. So, uh, a newspaper distributed in Germany, very important newspaper, and uh, they say, okay, look at these people, what are they doing? And innovation means uh, we are uh, taking care of uh, artificial intelligence and also uh, of a digital transformation. And uh, the question is how we do this in our area. Okay, uh, uh, here's my stick. Uh, I showed you the companies. In our area, very important companies, uh, 60 billion uh, euro turnover every year in this relative small company. And then we have also universities. I think if you talk about the um, wealth of the area, you have to talk about the companies, but you have also to talk about universities. Yes, because we know that universities are very important for innovation, for example. And in our area, uh, with uh, 2 million people, we have 65,000 students and uh, five universities and uh, these universities work together. That's quite, uh, that's not, uh, you don't find this very often, that universities are tied uh, uh, together and they are working in certain projects, uh, for example, for innovation. So uh, we have the University of Bielefeld, and the University of Black Bielefeld, and so on. Um, I have all the presidents here of the universities. It's very good to have all these presidents with you when you are talking in other countries. And, um, and my president is the speaker of all the other universities. Uh, and uh, this is also very important for our speech today. Uh, two weeks ago, we had a party an uh, entrepreneur generation day at my university. Do we have these, uh, do you know these uh, parties, these events? Do we have something like this here? That we celebrate from time to time, uh, entrepreneurs of your um, 
university, um, we started now. Yes, we started now to do this. Uh, it's not that we do it every year, but I think we have to do something with this area. And uh, that was a very nice party, Entrepreneur Generation Day. Uh, if you are lucky, you have uh, successful entrepreneurs in your alumni. Uh, and uh, these are our uh, successful entrepreneurs. And um, this is Igor, uh, and this is uh, uh, Niels, and uh, this is a photographer, Hirsch, Raven, and this is also, uh, these are not brothers, but they are also entrepreneurs, about 32 years old, a teacher. And uh, it's, uh, and now you can ask me who is the most successful and the richest of them. They are all 10 years in business. Uh, what is success? What is money? We don't know. Uh, but uh, uh, he looks not very happy, but he is the most successful. Uh, he must say, this is Igor. Igor uh, started uh, 10 years ago uh, with his hobby. Uh, because he was studying at the University of Bielefeld, but uh, studying was only one part uh, of his um, uh, activities. Most of the time uh, he was traveling. Yes, everybody wants to travel. And he blogged, he was a blogger, and uh, then somebody told him, okay, uh, you have to sell your ideas. Yes, please uh, uh, make a platform, and then you offer all these ideas, and uh, Perhaps uh, uh, some 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 um, uh, offers uh, for cheap uh, traveling and so on and so on. And uh, because he was so fascinated from his hobby and he wanted to talk about uh, his experiences, uh, uh, he made a business of this. And in Germany, uh, it is called Urlaubspiraten and um, holiday pirates. Holiday pirates is it in Europe? And uh, he went. From Bielefeld to where? Okay. He went to Berlin. <coughs> yes, he went to Berlin, and uh, that was not very good for, uh, in, in my opinion. It was a good decision for him, but not very good for our area, for example. And in uh, Berlin, he met some people, and he met uh, some people uh, who told him how he can make a business. And uh, now I have to look at my paper. Uh, because today, when he founded his uh, company in 2012, um, he uh, was very successful, and in 2016, he had a turnover of 258 uh, is it billion? Million? Billion? Billion euro. 258 billion, uh, billion euro. This is Igor. Yes? Okay. And uh, then one year later, he had not uh, anymore 2, uh, 258 billion, but 362 billion. And today, he uh, has uh, 200 people who, works, who work for him. Uh, for example. However, uh, in my opinion, not everybody has to do uh, like Igor. Yes, uh, we have all, all, uh, also other uh, startups, for example, uh, or entrepreneurs, let's say. Uh, for example, he is a very good uh, photographer, and he has his business in uh, um, communication, uh, in, um, what is it? Um, um, visual communication, yes, and your, um, uh, comes from your class. Visual communication, and he have, uh, has about 10 people in his business. He stayed in Bielefeld, and he is event manager, he makes events, and they sell software for creating your own uh, homepage, for example. So, also they have a digital business, and they have about 30 people. However, if you talk about these people, you see we have one person who went to Berlin and three people. Uh, four people who stayed in our area and created business and uh, employ people. Yes, and they are all different in their business. Uh, it's very important for me to mention this because if you talk today about um, startups, it's a very narrow discussion about digital business only. Yes, and uh, we uh, think we have to uh, broaden our view and to find out also other talents. Uh, in our uh, university. 
Okay, we did this event that uh, the message is uh, you have to find some uh, entrepreneurs uh, from your university uh, who are successful and then you bring them together with uh, the students who want to open their own business. And then they tell some success stories to the young people and uh, afterwards we have some beers and so on in a good uh, atmosphere and everybody can learn from each, uh, each other. So that was the idea, therefore you have to create also some uh, events. Okay, so some <coughs> uh, theoretical stuff, but then uh, I'm done with the theories. Uh, why do we talk about entrepreneurial ecosystems? Ecosystems is normally, but uh, I learned it many, many years ago, ecosystem is something related to biology, for example, yes? And uh, if you uh, bring it to another uh, level, then you can say that in a system, in an ecosystem, you have uh, a lot of people and actors who work together. And everybody has a certain task to work with other people. So therefore, we are convinced that uh, we have in an area a lot of people working in a different way for supporting um, startups and uh, entrepreneurs. And this is the system. Um, and why we are so keen to do this in our area? Because we want to stay uh, in business with uh, new technologies and we want to stay very competitive. That means uh, uh, we, work, uh, we want to uh, create value in our area. And uh, on the other side, we need this system because an individual entrepreneur cannot do all these uh, cannot uh, do all these challenges um, um, uh, at his own. He needs other people. You remember Igor? He needed the uh, support from friends in Berlin, and uh, uh, therefore you need uh, the help of the system. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, please don't uh, uh, look only at uh, the high growth startup scales uh, or uh, scale ups. But look also uh, to other um, entrepreneurs with other uh, ideas. Okay, so uh, this is our area and this is our ecosystem. However, if you look at it, what's your first impression? Uh, many people, many institutions, and if you want to ask uh, somebody, uh, okay, can you help me? It's very difficult for you to find the right person. This is one of the, uh, the problems we have today and uh, one of the uh, key issues is to make it very clear to you uh, and um, to um, find the right persons. The ecosystem means we have here the universities, you have here the companies I mentioned before, then you have here uh, all these uh, institutions like uh, Chamber of Commerce, yes? And then you have all the startups, for example. And then you have also <coughs> some uh, uh, new uh, infrastructure, uh, which we call uh, co-working spaces. So this is an example of uh, an ecosystem, which you can find, for example, in our area. OK, uh, if you go to Germany, if you look to Germany, you have more than 1,000 instruments and organizations who uh, support founders. And uh, my feeling is today we have an industry who creates startups. It's not only that the German government supports the startups, but, but uh, everybody uh, sees the opportunity to make a, a startup, uh, to help a startup, and it's very professional and very uh, difficult to understand on the other side, but very professional today. Yes. Uh, how can you support such an ecosystem? And uh, ecosystem means you have to work and you have to network also, but with different instruments and with uh, different uh, attitudes. And for example, we have, have different formats. As you have seen, for example, um, this meeting with Igor. Yes, uh, this was a many-to-many -many event. You think you invite some guests, for example, they talk to other guests. You can have also a one-to-many event. That means uh, I'm talking here with you. I'm one, you are many. Yes, and uh, can be a keynote speaker or an education in startup. And then you have active working, for example. 
Active working means, for example, um, you uh, take a company with certain needs, with a problem, and you put students into a group uh, with a company, and they have the company and the students resolve a problem together. This could be active working. Then social events, yes, it's a little bit similar to many, many events. And then what we are doing, consulting and mentoring. I will follow this in a few, I, I, I talk about this in a few minutes. Okay, uh, what is, uh, and then I'm done with all these uh, theoretical words, uh, what is uh, the, um, um, what are the uh, targets if you work in an ecosystem? First is, in my idea, you have to connect people. I think this is clear when you think about the world. We have to connect uh, uh, the people and everybody has a certain uh, task to uh, offer. Then, if we talk to you or you talk to the companies, it's very important that you focus not only on your technical solution, but you have also to focus on the customer needs. What does the customer want? And therefore, you need a certain education. Yes. Uh, and then it's very difficult for us in the university, for example, how do we find talents and possible founders? We are still offering our very traditional uh, programs, but uh, the task should be for us uh, to start very early uh, to uh, identify possible entrepreneurs. And uh, this is uh, not easy to do. And uh, at the end, it's my favorite thing, the support, appreciation and identification. I'll show you a little film uh, in a few minutes. Or you can do this. Yes. Uh, we have seen this uh, network in our startup area, and I will introduce you uh, to uh, three different organizations who offer startup uh, infrastructure and startup programs. For example, in our city, which is a city with 330,000 uh, inhabitants, uh, this is a Pioneers Club. You can listen to the word Pioneers Club, and this is also very important if you talk about today uh, our startups. This is, in my opinion, an own language. It is not only an uh, office uh, with uh, a desk, but it is a Pioneers Club. It's a club, a social organization, and you want to identify pioneers. Yes? Certain language and so on. Pioneers club. Pioneers club means startup meets Mittelstand. If you talk about Mittelstand, this is a typical German word, uh, then uh, we talk about mid-sized companies. The family or mid-sized companies, they are, as I mentioned before, very traditional. And if you put the traditional companies in one room with startups, then you have uh, to speed up with innovation. Therefore, in Germany or in my country here, in, in my city, we have these companies I showed you before, Dr. Oetker and so on, and they offer co-working space for startups. And uh, this is uh, one example. I hope you can see it. It's a little bit black and white. But uh, you can see more than just a co-working space, and you can ask what is more than just a co-working space. And they have a mission. Uh, they say joining forces, strengthening the region. What I told you before, the companies, they are looking for young talents, and they offer some infrastructure that you come to these places to work with them. And uh, this should be a film. And what you will see in the next two minutes is uh, that we have company owner, normally they are a little bit older in the film, uh, like me, and uh, then you have uh, startup uh, owners. You will see them, it's in German, I'm sorry for this, but perhaps you uh, look at it and uh, what's the message? Leidenschaft, herzlich. Was ich hier so wahrnehme, ist äh, auf jeden Fall eine Aufbruchstimmung. Ja, der Pioneers Club, der bietet uns einen äh, kreativen Space und ja, die Möglichkeit, dass wir mal die Unternehmensbrille absetzen. Man kommt hier rein und man hat sofort so ein Zuhausegefühl. Es ist total chillig hier, total relaxed. Really great. The people are all friendly, they're all enthusiastic. Modern, 
vielleicht digital im Sinne von vernetzend? Aber eben auch traditionell gleichzeitig. Ich bin hier im Pioneer Space, weil hier Kollegen zu Freunden werden. Insbesondere auch für junge Leute äh, muss der Spaßfaktor und der Kommunikationsfaktor sehr, sehr hoch sein. Der Pioneers Club treibt einen noch mehr nach vorne. Ähm, die Umgebung motiviert einen ähm, immer mehr zu schaffen. Wir brauchen einfach Impulse ähm, über ein Netzwerk von Menschen, die sich mit der Thematik digital beschäftigen. Und wir haben hier einfach ähm, alles, was wir brauchen und damit am meisten Zeit, uns unserer eigentlichen Aufgabe zu widmen. Man lernt schnell Leute kennen, man kann Synergien fließen lassen und äh, man ist vor Ort. Kommunikativ, das ist einfach das Gefühl von ähm, Menschen, die was Neues schaffen wollen. Für uns ist wichtig, dass wir hier auf innovationsorientierte Industrieunternehmen treffen und dieser Austausch ist für uns extrem wichtig. In diesem Potenzial, da wollen wir nicht nur mitlaufen, sondern das wollen wir aktiv mitgestalten. Das macht sehr viel Spaß und das, man sieht halt jeden Tag neue Gründer, neue Ideen und deswegen irgendwie begeistert das halt auch. Ja, ich bin Wahnsinn, dass sowas in Bielefeld steht. Hätte ich nie nach Bielefeld verortet, sondern eher nach Berlin. Wir finden es wichtig, einfach den Kontakt zur Region zu halten. Hier sind super viele interessante Leute, Talente, gute Firmen. Wir glauben, dass besonders hier industriell in Bielefeld, im OWL, die Umgebung wahnsinnig stark ist. Und wir wollen mit dabei sein, wir wollen nicht weg, wir wollen lokal hier bleiben. Man fühlt sich zu Hause, man fühlt sich aufgehoben, man fühlt sich unter Freunden und es ist einfach eine wundervolle Atmosphäre. So, uh, what you have seen is uh, these people are uh, very successful in the film. Yes, it's a film. And they are very young and uh, you see uh, a lot of emotion and you see a lot of coffee. Coffee is very important in this business, yes, because you have 24 hours a day to be successful, coffee says. And, uh, but remember uh, the face of Igor, yes, Igor is not uh, the typical, uh, uh, let's say, um, um, who, who is now in this film, he's a little bit uh, serious and so on, and uh, so the film should offer to you uh, a positive uh, atmosphere and a very good collaboration between old and uh, new companies. So, what you have to do in such a co-working space, uh, and uh, that means uh, you have to organize meetings, uh, you have uh, to organize some social events, which is regular table for example, and you have uh, some formats, uh, startup safaris means you can go with uh, young um, students who want to go to uh, to, to, who want to start a business, you can go to companies. Uh, you have to start some uh, actions which uh, do offer uh, the context to uh, new ideas and uh, to challenges and hackathons. Okay, so what's the uh, university, uh, the role of the university, and uh, how can we strengthen the startup activities? Um, I think uh, we um, have to do, uh, we, we have to support these uh, activities uh, because um, we also are interested that in our area we have economic growth. Uh, we have not only to teach and not only uh, to make some research, but we have also to transfer our knowledge into the, uh, into the business and we have to promote innovations as you can see right here. And um, now we have to, in our uh, area and now also in our um, university, we have to uh, offer education and postgraduate courses, uh, which we have to improve uh, uh, towards the needs of uh, the uh, development in the economy. Okay, uh, this is the role of the universities. We have to offer something in this area, and this is, for example, the Garage 33. And I ask you now, uh, do you understand the, uh, the, the, the expression uh, garage? And who invented the company in a garage? Yes, it's easy, huh? Um, who was that? Facebook. Facebook, for example. 
And you see, always language is very important in this business. Uh, we have the idea that you start in a garage or somewhere else, and uh, if you want to uh, uh, hint uh, out uh, something very special for startups and so on, you often find uh, the uh, expression garage. And the garage is an um, infrastructure at the University of Paderborn, and we work together with the University of Paderborn, Fachhochschule Bielefeld. And perhaps um, it will become a little bit clearer in a few seconds. I talked about infrastructure, infrastructure for a new uh, working situation. And what can you see here on the picture? If you Google it, uh, if you Google Garage 33, you can uh, make a little walk through this uh, room here. And what you uh, see here is uh, this is a theater. This is a little theater. In this theater, uh, like you have it here in Duras, uh, uh, the Exile Theater, People come together, uh, companies come with uh, students together uh, to discuss problems, and then the students have the opportunity to work in these rooms here, at these uh, desks, uh, with companies uh, over a weekend uh, about this problem. Yes? So then you come uh, every two or three hours, you come back to the theater and you report uh, about the, the next uh, stages of the process about the next steps of the progress. So, theater, to come together, coffee is here always, and then you can uh, go back to some uh, working spaces, and then you have also co-working. Co-working means some startups are here, and they're working for certain conditions. They can rent a room, a small room, and they, they can uh, start their business here. However, you can meet these startups also in this social area here, and uh, yes, you can exchange uh, your experiences. So co-working space, theater, and also possibility uh, to work. And then we have some administration and so, and so on. So interdisciplinary work and uh, the possibility to meet people easily is this what we have here in uh, the garage uh, 30, uh, 33. And uh, I uh, have another film here. Paravon, and what you have seen now was uh, first 
uh, Pioneers Club, company, uh, companies join startups. Now you have seen the uh, university organizes meetings between companies and students. And uh, you see also uh, the same uh, infrastructure, yes? So infrastructure is quite important. Okay, uh, infrastructure means uh, you have to organize uh, some co-working spaces. And this is very famous, I think, co-working spaces. But uh, I think we talked uh, during our um, journey uh, in September that it's not very easy to organize co-working spaces. And if I talk about an industry, many people try to make also a business from these co-working spaces. However, you have to rent a room and you have to create some turnover uh, and so on. So what have you uh, organized to make it a little bit profitable? That's not so easy. And uh, this could be a co-working space. But remember, not only infrastructure, but also social action, yes, coffee and so on. And this, uh, this must be organized in a co-working space. And if you uh, want to understand what is co-working space, then, for example, you see that the, uh, that, that was a pioneer's club. You have here chairs in a row. Um, this is uh, an audience, like here, where you can make presentations, for example, yes? We meet for a presentation, one to many presentations. Then uh, you have offices here, small offices. There's people who are in the startup need small offices. Yes. And they should be cheap, normally. Um, then you have some uh, area where you can relax. In the Pioneers Club, you have a garden, a roof garden. Yes, always with coffee, of course, you know. And so on. That means you have some social activity here, you have offices, you have to organize some uh, meeting places where people uh, can meet and uh, talk, and you need a program. You need not only infrastructure, but you need a program, social events, and uh, keynote speakers, and so on, to create community and to create also traffic. And the big challenge is that uh, you need members who pay and support the co-working space. And you need startups who rent co-working spaces. Otherwise, we have no traffic, and otherwise it doesn't work. And you know, for example, that you need about, people say, 200 members, 200 members in such an area to make, to make it work. Yes, otherwise it's very difficult. And I think we talked about it, that not every co-working space is working very well. Um, that means you cannot only have an idea of a co-working space, you have to understand, you understood uh, why we need a co-working space, it's not easy to manage it. And uh, there is a, a program of uh, yes, uh, supporting, but also um, uh, supporting business, but also supporting social events. This is a, a co-working space as we found it, I find it and where you have to offer a co-working space, um, you have to offer it in the middle of the town, for example. Yes? Where everybody can come and where uh, it creates a social place. Yes, in the middle of the town, very attractive. People say. Okay, what we have seen uh, was a Pioneers Club, we have seen Garage de Handreisig, University of Paderborn, and now I talk a little bit about my institution, and uh, then you will have, uh, uh, at the end, uh, the last film, and then we have done it. Our um, institution is partner of the ecosystem. The, the University of Applied Sciences is partner of the ecosystem, and we work together with the University of Paderborn. For example, we send our students who want to create a business to this Garage 33, when they create their business. But we are focused, because not everybody can do everything, on the pre-seed phase of uh, this process founding a business. So what is pre-seed? Pre-seed means you have not found it, you, didn't, uh, you have not founded your business, but you have an idea. You have an idea uh, about a, a certain solution, and uh, 
the university has now the, uh, uh, the opportunity to offer you something where you can develop your idea. And this is the pre-seed phase of the complete process. And we uh, organize this pre-seed phase uh, because we offer uh, support in coaching and mentoring. What is the main challenge for the founder if you want to do your own business? You need somebody you can talk to. Yes? You have to share your ideas and you need somebody who uh, helps you if you uh, have some questions. And this is the typical uh, idea of coaching. Yes? Coaching means uh, we uh, identify uh, people who want to start a business, we select people who have good ideas, and then we organize coaching events where individual uh, uh, startup uh, can go to a coach, and this is coaching, for example, for the uh, questions you have, how I make a business, but this is also personal coaching, uh, how you can um, yes, uh, work in a team and so on. So coaching is a uh, quite uh, important for the development and this is internal we have an internal uh, coach and uh, then what is also very important if you think about Igor we put people like Igor together with people who are already successful in the business this is mentoring so we can coach however if Igor has special needs and special questions uh, regarding how I make a platform, for example, and uh, how can I penetrate my market idea, then we put him together with another company owner who is already successful outside the university. So we have two uh, aspects. This is coaching and this is mentoring. So this is what we do. Uh, we started uh, many years ago with an innovation lab, uh, which is also a network of the universities you have seen before, University of Bielefeld, uh, Applied Sciences and so on. And uh, we started with our startup activities because uh, we saw that in the last, uh, last five years the startups declined. And you understood that this is not very good for a region if you have done startup activities. And uh, then we uh, uh, had a meeting with our uh, universities and the universities said we uh, organize a common action to make more startups. And uh, that was uh, at the end the program we had um, and everybody is uh, offering a part in this innovation lab. Every university is offering a part in this innovation lab and for example we start with uh, information and application services. We have to identify uh, uh, students who want to create a business. That means in every faculty, for example, you are here in the faculty of business, and in every, then we have faculty of engineering, I was taught. In every faculty, we have a scout. Students know that I can go uh, to this colleague uh, who, is, uh, who likes to support startups. That's very important that you have in every faculty somebody from the professors who is interest, interested in startup business. These are the scouts who find in their faculty uh, possible entrepreneurs. And uh, then not every uh, idea is very good. Yes, you have to check very early if the idea is uh, good or not good. This is uh, 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 the, the, the check here. And then you have the next step. You identify four or five groups every year and then you ask them what do you need to uh, improve your skills. This is the market, uh, marketability training. And then it comes to the team coaching. Uh, this is individualized. Every week they have to meet their coach. And uh, then uh, when they have the make the next grade of uh, in that process, uh, we organize also somebody from uh, outside. This is the mentoring what I explained before, and uh, then it is not only working in a, uh, a quiet room, but we have to put the people together. This is mm. events as you have seen the entrepreneurial day at the beginning. We have to put them together with successful people or with other people 
who have problems uh, and experiences starting business. So networking and cooperation. This is our cycle we can offer in our university. <coughs> so we have not to offer all the bunch we have seen with co-working spaces and Garage 33. However, if we have teams uh, who are, uh, need more, then we work together with other partners. Uh, okay. I think uh, we need uh, still some, some room for discussions, therefore I skip uh, two or three uh, uh, slides and uh, I want to finish with uh, the last example. You have uh, learned now about uh, the Pioneers Club, you have learned about the Garage around Reisig, I introduced uh, to you our system um, and now we have uh, since 2000, 2016 a new organization in our area, this is uh, the Founders Foundation. Please think about the uh, expressions, Pioneers Club, Founders Foundation, the only language uh, they have in the uh, startup industry. And the Founders is an organization who is looking for these startups like Igor. Yes, they are very interested in finding these two or three startups every year to, uh, which, uh, who can create. Uh, such a turnover in such a very short period of time. The so-called unicorns, perhaps. And they do it uh, uh, very professional, uh, I told you, very professional industry. Uh, and uh, they say, for example, as a mission we develop, entrepreneurial talent Germany needs to create a digital future. That's their mission. So they are concentrated on digital business. We are concentrated not only on digital, but we do more. Yes. However, they are very focused and uh, they say we offer three entry points to our startup community. Uh, they also make networking events, but they train also uh, the people uh, for a certain uh, target because they train the people to pitch their, and, uh, their idea. Uh, that means you have, to find, uh, you have to find some other uh, people who give you capital for your um, idea for your business and um, therefore they have the educational program and then um, they have uh, also this accelerator, accelerator process which means uh, how can I develop my business very fast. Yes, uh, and so on. What I want to show you now is, it was the last point on one of the slides, if you work 24 hours a day for your business and you have a very good idea, then you need some appreciation. Yes? Somebody has to tell you that you are a very good person. Otherwise, you don't make it. And uh, you must see this because uh, what they are doing, uh, we are a city between Berlin and uh, uh, Munich, and we are not New York or something like this, but every year the founders, they make a big party in Bielefeld. And thousands of people come from Germany to this popular spot and they celebrate uh, the startups. Herzlich willkommen zur Hinterland of Things Leaders and Makers Conference 2018 in Bielefeld. Tausch 180 Jahre Tradition versus 2 Jahre Startup mit. Wir haben Rocket Mittelstand Unleashing the Beast als eines unserer Panels. Zukunft der Robotics, Revolutionizing Textiles, Innovation Made in OVL. Was der Mittelstand von Einhorn lernen kann, der Grund, weil wir das schon immer so gemacht haben, existiert nicht. Wenn etwas besonders viel Kohle einbringt, dann ist das ein guter Grund. Aber einfach nur, weil man das schon immer so macht, ist einfach kein Grund, etwas weiterzumachen. Wir haben die ganze Zeit über Startups gesprochen und jetzt wollen wir sie uns auch gemeinsam anschauen. Startup X. Hier wird diskutiert, hier wird investiert, hier werden Brötchen gerettet und Uhren vertickt. Hier wird Start-up-Geschichte geschrieben und das jetzt schon fast seit zwei Jahren. Dankeschön. 
Willkommen zur ersten Verleihung des Rocket Mittelstand Awards der Hinterland of Things 2018. Der erste Rocket Mittelstand Award der Hinterland of Things geht an Josef Brunner.
participate in competitions for brands, uh, the jury always asks us, what is your marketing concept internal? How do you reach your students? And uh, this is uh, uh, very, very important. I think, uh, first uh, of all, uh, first um, you, you need a concept uh, where you offer a, a course, or two courses, where the, uh, uh, the students become aware of entrepreneurship. We offer some courses, you do it too. Uh, what we try is uh, now, uh, we are in a very good situation at our university that in every course program, engineering, design, and so on, we have uh, a course of business administration. In every, also in your faculty, uh, in design, you have a, a business administration course for uh, uh, one semester. And uh, although I don't offer this course, I ask the colleague who offers this course, uh, please give me eight hours of your course where I can uh, uh, promote the idea of entrepreneurial uh, um, business. So I have to go to the people, uh, but I, have to need, uh, I need a certain infrastructure in the course program so that everybody knows me. And then, um, we have to organize competition and events. And we have to talk about competition uh, and events. And, and so on. Yes. So uh, and I think uh, what works, it works very good with the scouts. That um, the scout is actively uh, listening to the students. And if somebody is talking or he sees something, uh, that there is a, a genius uh, with some ideas, then uh, he should go to us. So scouting, uh, house programs and events. Uh, for example. Yeah. Um, you mentioned in your presentation that uh, one, of the, one of the most difficult things to do is identify people who have ideas yes. or who want to be entrepreneurs. Uh, on the other side, here in Albania, and it's maybe a general uh, issue that there are young people who don't trust them themselves or their ideas or who also are afraid of failure. What would be your advice having this experience with uh, innovation labs and garage and so on? What would be your advice to them to get them to uh, honor their, their idea and their need to be uh, an entrepreneur? I think the failure is a big issue also in Germany. I think you are very, uh, you are heroes if, if you compare to German uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, this is a very, very important issue. Uh, I think uh, one, uh, it was very short because I had only one hour. One very important issue uh, in my opinion, in my presentation is also this mentoring. If you are not sure, you need somebody to. Uh, uh, can give you some advice on a personal, um, uh, personal level. Yes, you have to, uh, this is not mentoring, so this is coaching. I mean, you, have, you need to have a personal coach. That helps. Then uh, you need also, uh, this is our discussion always, uh, we have to create uh, some uh, uh, room where people can uh, yes, try something. Uh, not in a regular way, but they can try something and they can have some help um, there. Yes, we, we work on this on this room. We don't have this, content. but you know also these uh, uh, fab labs and so on organizations, uh, the infrastructure in universities. Um, we have some very uh, good uh, examples in Germany. Uh, for example, Munich is quite famous for their uh, infrastructure, uh, leaving people in, uh, working in some Fab labs. Um, however, this is very, very expensive. Uh, I think also it depends on the on the infrastructure. Yes, we discuss it always. Uh, our president and so on. Uh, however, we have a, the, the, the the next practical step is uh, we have some uh, very nice uh, colleagues who open their labs not only for the students for course programs. But if there are two or three uh, other students who want to uh, create a prototype, uh, they can use the labs. So open lab is, for example, uh, the next step before you have you know, infrastructure. Uh, 
Does this answer your question? Or? Okay. But failure is a big uh, issue in Germany. We know this, yes. Uh, we are very afraid. Mosques and uh, everything is big. 